Hi, and welcome back to Glassboxed writing automated cucumber tests. Today we're going to have a look at writing background scripts for our feature files. We're going to see what a background script is and why you would want to use a background script. So as tradition dictates, we're going to navigate to the Java test site first. And on this test site, we're going to think of a couple of scenarios to automate against. So before we actually decide to automate against a journey, let me talk about what a background script is. In a feature file, when you have multiple steps, so if we have a quick look, when you have multiple scenarios with multiple steps, and each step might do something different, they might do similar things. So in this case, we're repeating the given step. We're clicking on an adoption link in one scenario and on the contact link in another scenario, but effectively they're still the same step, but we are passing different parameters in this step. And in our steps, we obviously do different things. So in this particular one, where we say popular contact form, we're clicking on certain fields or we're populating certain fields or we're selecting certain things from drop down boxes and so on. A background step is this concept of taking out common steps from your feature file and putting it somewhere else so that those steps will always run as a prerequisite to all of your given scenarios. So let's first have a look at the scripts that we already have and I've written two really basic ones really quickly and in these two scenarios what we're doing is in the first one we're simply going to click on the adoption link and we're going to select the today value from the drop down link and then just close the browser and in the second scenario again we're going to navigate to the zoo site and this time we'll click on a contact link we're going to populate some data in the contact form and then close the browser so how does that actually look like on our web page well we're going to click on the adoption link as part of the first scenario and we're going to select this today value from the drop down box and that's it. For our second scenario we're going to click on the contact link and we're going to fill in a few fields here. It's not really important which ones we fill in, we're just going to fill in a few. It doesn't really matter for the purpose of this video. So if we quickly run this just to make sure it's working. So I'm going to go right click run as cucumber feature. So let's have a look at the console output. So it looks like we didn't have any failures and everything run as expected. Uh, that's pretty good. So if we have a look at our feature file, again, really quickly, we're repeating certain things such as this given step here. The same thing is happening in different scenarios. Now let's just say we actually did a couple more things in different scenarios. For instance, uh, instead of the adoption link, this time we clicked on the about link and let's just remove this step here the then step and just close the browser and here let's just say we clicked on home and again let's just remove that so now we have four different scenarios all doing different things but all having the same first step i a common step that is universally shared across all scenarios don't you think it'd be pretty good if we're actually able to move this step somewhere else but have it part of a scenario or to be a little bit more specific it would make more efficiency sense if we were able to say import in steps as a prerequisite to running a scenario without actually having it in the scenario now luckily Cucumber actually gives us the ability to do that through what's called this background script so to write the background script is actually quite straightforward. What you do is you write background, colon, and then any steps you put under the background script will actually run as part of this prerequisite step. So let's just say we move that. In other words, let's just say we move the given step from here to here, and we get rid of this. What will happen now is this given step will run as part of this background before any other scenario runs. So from a hierarchy run perspective or if you like from a stack trace perspective, 
what will happen when, when this feature file runs is it will run all the given steps for a background first and then run a scenario. It will then return to the background and then run the second scenario and so on. So again to clarify when we run this feature file the first thing you will do is look at how many scenarios there are. So in this case this feature file has four different scenarios. It will then look to see if there are any background scenarios and there is one. It will then run all the steps under background only followed by the first scenario. When the first scenario finishes it will then run the second scenario by running the background step first again and it will repeat this circular process until all the scenarios in your test have run. So if we were to update our feature file it now looks like this. In other words if we remove all the given steps what now happens is this is what it looks like. So we will run this given step first before running any scenario and we will run it for each time there are a scenario in your feature file. So what advantages does this actually bring? Well let's just say for some reason let's just say as part of our prerequisite steps we need to let's just say add in another step for something. For instance in our feature file we say given I am on the zoo site let's just say arbitrarily your web app changes and when you go to this step now what you have to do is enter some kind of age verification so there are various sites uh, in the real world which uh, require you to validate yourself through some means of age verification or maybe some kind of login screen something that prevents you from accessing the site without actually identifying yourself in some means and although you can argue that why not just do it in this step here why not just go into our step definition and just do it in here a lot of people would say I don't want to do that because that kind of breaks the way the step is in other words my step is subscribed as I'm navigating to the zoo site that's not the same as saying I'm navigating to the zoo site and validating myself if you had this step repeated in a hundred different tests in, a, in four or five different feature files you'd have to go in and change it in every single one assuming you don't change the code so a better way to do it is to just have another step here saying given I am on the zoo site and maybe another given I am validated this would now run as part of all your scenarios without you having to type it in every single one of your scenarios. It kind of takes care of the handling that you would need to do or otherwise the copy pasting that you would have to do. It kind of gives you a small advantage in reducing the overhead needed for repeating common steps in your scenarios. Uh, the other advantage it brings is by having all your say common steps or universal steps in one place one of the biggest things is you're reducing repetition and making it easier to manage but another plus is now steps or rather scenarios are a lot more specific in what they do for instance this scenario is saying to set the start date and the very first step it goes into is it goes to the very page which the start date needs to be tested on it doesn't bother with trying to explain I need to be on the zoo side so your tests are actually a lot more specific now as well anyway enough talk let's just run this and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like all of our tests are finished. So let's have a look at the output. So it's pretty good in that it's saying that it ran a background step first. In other words, it ran our given I am on the zoo site step first, followed by the first scenario it found. So in this case, it just happened to be the first one on our list. And the next thing it did was it ran the background step again and the following scenario and so on. So from a console print line, it actually tells us what it ran in what order, which is exactly how I described it. So you can see how having this background step, how it can save you time and how it can make writing tests a little bit more specific and easier to manage. It provides a convenient place to put all the common steps that you need to run as part of your feature file without having to write it in multiple different scenarios. Remember the more 
time you repeat a step the more chances there are of you making a manual mistake if you like it's not very common it's probably not the most efficient thing to say but reducing the copy pasting of a step and play, putting it in one location just makes it that much more easier to manage from an automation perspective also and that's it for this video folks thanks for watching hi guys I really appreciate you watching my videos and if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you already haven't hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest videos which I release every Wednesdays and Sundays also follow me on Twitter Facebook and Google links in the description below until next time Ciao.